topics for today, which is um, conspiracy theories. So Q and on. Q and on. We're we're pretty much are not any people to talk about conspiracy theories. Like yeah. we, we both would say we have the odd weird thought here and there. Yeah, yeah, um, like you know, special undies on match day or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stuff look, like that. I I think we, like they're they're more rituals. True. true. They're more like um, like bad omens and stuff. I think for me. I think and you can tell everyone what you did. Yeah. But for me, like, I always thought that if I never watched the game, that the team would either win and then it's because I didn't watch the game. Yeah, yeah. Like, even going to my own games, I felt like if I, you know, didn't go in the car at a certain time, yeah. bad omens. Yeah. Did you have the same? Yeah, similar. I think I used to have, like, sort of routines. You know, I used to like wearing specific jocks on certain days for games. I think I've seen players that have to put their boots and shin guards on in, yeah, like, a yeah. certain order. Um, I still pack my bag like that for weddings. Yeah. I found that, man, I was like so adaptable with my like rituals. Mm. Uh, it'd be like, if I had a bad game, that ritual would change. And then if I had a good game, the ritual would stick. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be a matter of like, even if it was a dumb thing, like wearing like undergarments, like skins, you know, if I wore them and it was hot and I played well, I'd take it and I'd roll with that. Okay. Even if the next week could have been 37 degrees and you know, this is Australia, right? We could cop that occasionally and I'd, I'd still roll with it. So... I don't think it's as, as feasible. Um, I guess the pro the pro example that I was thinking of was Ronaldo at uh, World Cup 98. Mm-hmm. So obviously there was the final against France. Um, he went MIA during the week. Um, there was rumours that he was at a bar. There was rumours that he was unwell. I think I what was reported, that, yeah. I think it was that he had a seizure or se- multiple seizures. Yep. Because um, then obviously in the final, he sort of, it wasn't really himself. He wasn't at the level that he had been for the you know, previous games either. And then they got rolled as well. So uh, I think from, from reports that I've read, you know, there was a, a bit of a moral dilemma in there whether you know, Nike wanted him to play because he's Ronaldo. You know, Zidane's yeah. out on the pitch for Adidas. We need our direct comp- competition. And he's you know, the marquee player. He's the big dog. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's no, real, you know, there's no real truth behind this. It is very much a conspiracy theory. Um, but it is, it's a very interesting story to know the truth behind what actually happened. What happened? No one knows. It's, it's never come ah. out. Yeah, yeah. So it's so been reported on. Stories. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's been reported on that he may have had a seizure. He I may have been this. drunk. He may have gone MIA. Was this 2002? 98. 98. France yeah, 98 yeah. World Cup. So Some, France something else happened to Brazil to 2002 World Cup, wasn't it? In Korea? Uh, there was another, there was another well, story. Well, they, about they that. won. So. <laughs> yeah, there was another conspiracy. But that, that one there actually sticks to mind. Um, actually, maybe that was where he was drunk. It might have been Korea. There was another one. I think it was 2002. I may be crossing over lines a little bit. I but think it was yeah. a young one. And then he was like a hero at 2002. Yeah, correct. I think that's right, actually. Yeah, because 2002, yeah. he did. He scored in the final. Oliver Kahn was keeper, I remember. There was something about that. Yeah. Yeah, there, I think was it two thousand two. You can you can you can fact check if you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know the seizure. The seizure story. Again, it's a conspiracy theories. So really it is. It, it, yeah. Well, the seizure. The, the story about the seizure was from ninety eight. Okay. Um, and they were saying that he didn't perform in the final. So the story does stick to my mind. Again, I think I think Maradona had a moment like that too, where he was like ill or something. Like yeah, yeah, play. yeah. And they were saying. Yeah. I think the best story that's not a conspiracy is, is Wesley Schneider. I think he was saying before a Champions League game, he went out partying with his missus and like. Yeah got like smashed <laughs> got home at, like four in the morning and then played the best game the next day scored like two <laughs> goals or something and he goes if i can play like that and after a night out i can play like uh, i never understand that and then you've got like players that are flip side like andrea pulo before the 06 world final world cup final he's playing fifa all night like like how how does that was it italians at the world cup said no sex before the games i wouldn't be surprised i know guardiola has that has ago. that theory for a lot of his uh, a lot of his squads actually weird it's crazy it's crazy when you think about the full like, service single regiment. ones it's just, <laughs> <laughs> what i do yeah i know it's how regimented that lifestyle can be it's, it's absolutely insane i don't have a can, like actual conspiracy theory that i can say off the top of my head but i did do a google and i remember this one um more so because um it's funny but the the headline is arsenal poisoned tottenham to beat rivals to champions league <laughs> so tottenham were on the course to qualify the champions league in 2000 2006 2005-2006, um, local rivals Arsenal for the first time in more than a decade, so they're going to finish above them. Um, all the Gunners needed to do was um, was win on the final days of the season. A game against West Ham um, side with nothing left to play. Uh, they stayed in the Canary Wharf at the hotel there, and a number of key players became violently ill after eating what was identified as a dodgy lasagna. <laughs> Michael Carrick, Robbie Keane, Edgar Davids. I forgot he played at Tottenham. Yeah, wow. Uh, Michael Dawson, Aaron Lennon, Temu Taneo were among them, ripping out the core of the team. The, p- 
Premier League reject the request to postpone, which is funny now with the whole COVID and teams postponing. So um, times. And con a conspiracy theorists pointed the finger at some of the some kind of sabotage effort from Arsenal, who of course had benefited when Spurs lost the game against the Hammers. How crazy! So West Ham had nothing to play for. Spurs just needed to like win that game, and Arsenal needed to win the last game of the season. What happens? They all get food poisoning, and all the big dogs go down. Yeah, and all the big and dogs. Even go if they were to play, I don't know anyone that's ever tried to play. That after could be a Kenyan witch doctor. Or, yeah, true. but like <laughs> dodgy lasagna. That, 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 you know what? Like I, yeah, I wouldn't beans. be surprised. It's like those stories we heard with the soccer roos and other teams where the away fans would come to the hotel and make noise. Yeah, all yeah. I think we, I think Western Sydney Wanderers copped that with Al Hilal um, in the Champions League, Asia Champions League yep. final, where the fans were like, annoying. Yeah. And wouldn't let the players leave. But this kind of comes back to what we were talking about earlier, you know, different ploy tactics on yeah. the pitch. This is very much off the pitch. And, you know, you can go to, like, the um, Super Copper, right? Mm. River, River Boca, I think it was a year, two years ago. Mm. Um, and the, the fans throwing bricks at the bus. And I know that's... Was that the game that was postponed twice? Yeah, and, and then they, they ended played up... played in fucking Europe? In Spain, yeah, at the Bernabeu, I think it was. Um, which is crazy, you know, like, how, how does so many people have such a big influence on a game? It's absolutely insane. Uh, but, like, coming back to the, the Tottenham Arsenal one, like... I don't know. That seems far fetched. I think that's that's a long way to go. Conspiracy theory. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if the chef was like an Arsenal fan, and then that that might be more feasible. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Look, I think when it comes to conspiracy theories, like when it comes to football, there's so many. I think the number one I read was Hal Webb and certain co refs being <laughs> fans of certain teams. Like, like yeah. everyone grows up. Like, for example, if I became a ref. And I was refing, say, in Australia, and then, like, the Aussie guy that's refing there, it's yeah. like I was flown over to work there. It's like, I'm a <laughs> United fan. I can't. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. Like, they're, they're the conspiracy theories, and, and like... But it's going to happen. It's going to happen to players, surely, uh, all the time. 100%. Like, do what, you switch allegiances? Like, how, how does that work? What about Serie A and all the fucking under-the-table money they've oh, done? Yeah, over Is the years, Is the conspiracy yeah. theories, or does, like, does half of Italy own itself? I think half of Juventus owns Italy. Or half of Juventus owns half of Italy. What's the owner of Juventus' name? Wasn't the former president? Uh, like, no, no, that, you're thinking of Berlusconi. Yeah, Berlusconi, did, he owned Milan for a bit. Milan, Mason yeah. Milan, yeah. Um, I don't he think was he doing was. some shady deals. Oh, yeah, he's bunga bunga parties and all that sort of stuff that was going bunga on. Bunga bunga <laughs> uh, I think when it comes to football stories, and there's so many that we can talk about, yeah. so I think that was a good topic today to discuss. Is there anything else in the football spectrum we can discuss? Anything new? Anything not topical that recently has come of light? That um, we the, there's obviously the new kits that came out for the MLS. Yes, I'm going to get them up as we speak. Do you want to yeah. get yours up too? Yeah, yeah, I think I've got them ready. That so. sounds so fucking wrong. <laughs> get, them up. <laughs> get them up, boys. Do you want to get yours up too, mate? Yes, we do. Um, look, there's, I think from what I can see, they've released seven mm -hmm. kits. Um, and they're all pretty nice, actually. I think they've done, they've done well. I know all Adidas actually have been released. Is every team in the MLS sponsored by Adidas? The whole league. Yeah, okay. it's like NBA. So NBA has. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember seeing on FIFA too, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, it is the Adidas. The MLS. Seattle Sounders. I don't mind. It does look a bit cheapy for me with the the sort of um, Croatia style, but I do like that modern look. So that, if Croatia were with Adidas, I think yeah. that could look nice, red and white. You know. Oh, I think yeah. I think that's a, that's yeah, it's a great kit. Can I don't. Th I, I don't think I've seen Croatia with Adidas ever. No. I think they've always been Lotto Can and then into Nike. Can you imagine red and white and then blue? Yeah, that'd be thing. That incredible. Would, that, that's kit, also yeah. ni nice, like. Dinamo is like a real or something. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing their, like, whatever they choose as, like, an alternate strip because I think that sponsor, but that sponsor year. would look really nice in, like, a dark, yeah. maybe the dark style thing. The one I want to get, the Hendrix kit. Yeah, nice. I still haven't got it, I need to get that. <laughs> this is nice. I do like seeing this. This is the, the new um, yep. collar one. I think something Adidas do really good is just bespoke designs at the moment with yeah. their collars and stuff. Yeah, I think well, Galaxy have done well with this kit. This is um, nice. I do like it. It's so simple. Look, remove, remove all that sort of shirt sponsorship and all that. It would look really nice. Yeah, 100%. just like just like a t-shirt, you know. Funnily, like looking at these photos of the players, Chicharito looks really old. <laughs> yeah, he's aged. Um, great player though. But yeah, look, I think Adidas do really well all their all their player spec stuff. Mm -hmm. um, for anyone you know that's that's weighing up whether to go fan or player spec, definitely go the player spec because 100%. the quality in the material and even just looking at the crest and the badge. Oh man, man, it's, it's, it's so nice. The detail's good. Um, now going to this one that I really want, oh, the beautiful. Timbers. Yeah. This is beautiful. Like Stunning. they have the the one um, for the the, the thorns, the yes. women's team. Yep. Love it. And now when I saw this, this is going to be an instant buy. I love the monochromatic design of the badge. Yep. Has gone to the purple, pinky, rose color. Yeah. And with the Adidas, but this is amazing. The sponsorship. I love ship. Yeah. Oh man. T teams doing that with their crest. You know, I know it can be hard to let go of the the classic. You know, style, especially for for clubs that are a lot older than the MLS teams, they always try and stick to their traditional. But when they move away and do a monochromatic or you know match the kit at least, 
It looks so good. It yeah. is, honestly, like this one. This is probably the best of the seven that have been released. Yeah, 100%. Um, it actually reminds me, there was a kit that was similar. Um, was it Red Star Paris? Yes, that's the one I have. Yeah. Yeah. The white, it's more white than... There's white and a green one. Yes. Yeah. Um, similar colors, similar yeah. vibe. Yeah, similar vibe to that with the floral type of feel. Um, but yeah, very cool design. they did that Rekta, that, that Rekta, the Vekta... The Rector design. <laughs> the Rector design, no. The no, Vector. Not a Rector design. Do you reckon right. they um, scanned the rose or do you reckon it's a photo and then they've gone full black and white okay. threshold? Yeah, it looks like, yeah, like a posterized type of I do of, like um, it. It looks almost like a stampy. That, you know, yeah. that design itself can be really well maintained throughout the season as a poster, oh, you know? 100%. Like, I'd, I'd be interested to know what they match it up with, like what shorts. I almost feel like every kit, and of course I'll show it on the screen, it's going to be a bit of a pain for me to do, but <laughs> fuck, I'll do it. Um, but I do like how every kit has some sort of design element like the stars for that the hex the the, the checkers yep. and they've got the rose and then the next one is the colorado rapids and we've got that star just going all over the show yeah i think they've got like the mountain range kind of falling through yeah, the I love that. which is cool like i think it's nice that they're you know paying no sponsor though that's weird that is a bit odd it might be you know yet to be released this one's good um yeah yeti interesting one i find the yeti sponsorship a bit too loud but I don't know. The colorway is nice. I think it's um, and minty green. Yeah, it is a very minty green, isn't it? Almost like it's. I can smell it from here. The Sentimiento kit. Yeah. I've never been to Austin, so I'd love to check it out. So this is a beautiful. I love that. I love their logo done by. I think oh, his name's Mitch. No, I can't remember. But he's an Nike designer, and he's made the logo for this club. That is very cool. Amazing. Love that sort of Austin yeah. logo. That was a team I think that was meant to replace Columbus Crew. So I'm glad that Columbus stayed. Yeah. Um, then we've got the New York Red Bulls, which is going for that full Checkers. sort of checkers again. Yeah, yeah. But I like this one. It's almost like racing stripes. Yeah, I think it's basic. I'm not a fan of this one. I feel like for such a big club, they could have done something. A hundred percent. That that's funny. One of the, one of the things I like, I hate and like about Red Bull is the double sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> Her logo's twice. Yeah, it's funny that, isn't it? Because I guess well, it is their logo. The logo is a double ball. So yeah. I guess you kind of have to. And then the next one is the, uh, let me just make sure it's right, New England Revolution. Yeah. They've got a new logo now. It is cool. I actually really like this new logo. Yeah, it's really, it's got, it's got a nice classic look. It's I'm gonna, Corinthians I'm gonna miss, kind of feel. Yeah, I'm going to miss the old one, but I do like it. I feel yeah. like it's just, yeah, nice and clean. I feel like a lot of the teams are going for the classic look, and then the classic look is just that circle badge. Yeah, it seems that way, isn't it? It's funny. It's, um, you look, I think MLS has always had iconic branding you know you go back to americans like, i love their branding yeah but you go back to like the days of metro stars and yes um, you know even like galaxy back the, in this like say late 90s mm -hmm. mid to late 90s um their branding then was really cool and then they transitioned into obviously these new franchises new clubs and and whatever else and obviously shifting into addy but the new designs are really nice like yeah. i think they've done very I well the next episode we're going to do talk about branding and football yeah. and see like how teams Go from them to now. Yeah. I th when we talk about branding and football logos and changing, I think one team that would never change their logo, and if they did, would be really hard to find a new logo, is yeah. United. Yeah, actually, like that's a good how point. How do you change yeah. that logo? Do they go just the devil? Like Arsenal did that change. You got yeah. Man City changed. Yeah. How do you go with United? Well, I guess everyone was sort of a bit surprised with Inter, Roma. I remember those were a the couple. Inter logo no one talks about now. No, now. But at the time, it was a bit like, what? This club's so historical. It was a bit of a surprise. The Juventus one caused a lot of drama, but I feel like now it's just become yeah, it a culture. Yeah, that's true. Barcelona, mm -hmm. Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. I feel like those guys are, are and pretty And then you got Bayern original. Munich changing a little bit, which is like removing the blue. It's like... Oh, settle. Settle. That's like them with the Barca, home Barca, actually. Barca logo <laughs> is a bit hard. Yeah, Barca would be a hard one to change because it's very... Iconic. But it's, it's ingrained. It's so boring. I think they're, as a club, they're, their history is ingrained in the club's culture. Mm. You know, and I know that it's probably the same way for a lot of clubs, but it's almost like you grow up as like a Catalan and it's, you know, you, you're not, for example, like, a, you know, victory, you're not Victorian or you're not, you know, even if you're a city supporter, yeah, yeah. you still recognize yourself as a Victorian. You're not going to say you're from the Western suburbs. No, right? no, no. You're not a Geelongian or something. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know what you would call yourself if you're from Geelong, but. Yeah, just modernizing any of those the logos would be hard. But yeah, let us know in the comments what you think, what club would have an issue or even a trouble time trying to change their logos. Mm. Again, Chicago Fire Charge changing it. A lot of fans hated it. They had to change it again. They did three logos <laughs> in like three years. Jeez, that's a, that's a, that's a bit the rough. The new one's good, but fuck, man. That Chicago Fire, that was just hor horrendous. I wonder if they, do they keep the designer each time? Or different designer each time? I don't know, but whoever designed that would have had a lot of, uh, a lot of hate, love mm. relationship. But hey, they were paid. That was the main thing. Mate, that's it. Um, that's it, I think. That's yeah, pretty think we simple. Do. We're going to do some kid stuff today. Anything you want to say? Any new kids that you've got on you want to talk about? Oh, my God, so many. I have so many kids. My, my storage is uh, running out of space very, very quickly. It so it is. Uh, you've seen some photos. It's, it's getting out of control. And I know that there's a lot more coming. So, yeah, guys, please, please stay tuned. Please check out the website and uh, 
Yeah, there's definitely going to be something there, so you won't be disappointed. Stay safe. Stay with super people. See you later, guys. See you in the future. Bye. Bye.